Ready? Let's describe the nerve plexuses. So we said that the ventral rami, only the ventral rami, are going to form, to merge together and form that network that you can see in there, right? So we have four, cervical plexus, the brachial plexus, the lumbar plexus, and the sacral plexus. Let's describe first the cervical plexus. So in here, look at the spinal nerves in blue, okay? So we have C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5, okay? They merge together. This is a very complicated anatomy that we're not going to discuss. Uh, they form that plexus. What I want you to know is that from there, one nerve, only one nerve I'm going to ask you to know and is the important phrenic nerve that uh, innervates, as you know, the diaphragm muscle. So, and, and it's this, I'm sorry, is in here in the brachial plexus, you see all of the branches going like crazy in every direction. The only one that descends and goes down, uh, that's the phrenic nerve, okay? This one is the phrenic nerve. Now, what is the analysis that I want you to do in our class discussions. If I tell you, uh, we have an individual with a cervical, uh, an injury at the level of the cervical vertebrae, uh, or, and that damage the cervical plexus, something like that. So what is your train of thought? Well, you see, you think, well, the cervical plexus contains the branches from C1 to C5. So from there, I have the phrenic nerve. What is the function of the phrenic nerve? It innervates the diaphragm muscle. Remember, all the spinal nerves are sensory but in our motor or mixed nerves, okay? So what is the function now of the diaphragm? Well, this is the diaphragm muscle, and I know that uh, when it contracts, when it gets flat, uh, it expands the thoracic cavity to make room for more air during inspiration, right? So that's an inspiratory muscle. So what will happen if I damage my phrenic nerve? It won't uh, innervate, it won't stimulate the contraction of the diaphragm. What will happen if the diaphragm doesn't contract? Well, we cannot breathe in. And what will happen is uh, maybe acute respiratory insufficiency and <laughs> okay so that's how I want you to apply this knowledge on the class discussion I'm not going to say it anymore I'm just going to describe for the following plexuses plexuses um, the remi the ventral remi and the nerves okay and that analysis we're going to do it in class so brachial plexus the brachial plexus consists of now, well, is in blue, uh, the ventral remi of C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, sometimes T2. Um, so after a very complicated uh, thing that happens in there, uh, it creates, or the branches, the important branches for us of these nerves are here depicted in yellow. Those are the anterior branches. Actually, you can, if you're dissecting uh, an overlimb, you will be able to put your hand in between the yellow and the green nerves. So the yellow, all the yellow branches are anterior and all the green nerves are posterior, okay? So let's describe first the yellow. And the best way to see this nerve is just to locate the M. See, these nerves are monogram. Isn't this cool? The M that is in here, see, don't get lost. Ooh, that's the M. So the right in the middle of that M, this is the median nerve. Isn't that easy? It's in the middle. The lateral one is another M is the musculocutaneous nerve. And the medial one, well, you know the ulna is on the medial side, right? 
This is not monogram, but you know, ulna is in the middle, medial side of your arm, I mean, forearm, so you know that that's the ulnar nerve. Those are the three anterior branches of the brachial plexus. The, axilla, the posterior branches, let's make it in green, just like that, right? And you can see, follow this nerve, right? Actually, let me... Okay, I, I, the thing I don't think you're going to be able to see it, right? Okay, let's follow this, okay, and see how it branches one and two branches. These are the two branches that we're going to study here. This is the axillary nerve, okay, that maybe you have covered that on the lab, that innervates the deltoid mu muscle and the teres minor. And these, again, remember, these are posterior branches. This is the radial nerve. Okay, so we cannot see it here because they're partially covered by the humerus. So looking green, behind the humerus, this is the axillary branch and it is behind the humerus. We cannot see it in there, but in here is located the radial uh, nerve that then uh, it twists around and becomes anterolateral in the elbow and forearm, okay? Uh, look, fun fact, look at the ulnar nerve in here, how it descends. Now we are in the this one, okay? The ulnar on the anterior uh, and medial side of the upper limb. Follow the ulna, the medial side of your, the medial nerve in the upper limb, okay? All the way here. So look how, at the level of your elbow in the medial epicondyle is very superficial. It's right there beneath the, uh, the, the skin. That's the funny bone. See, cool facts. The funny bone is not a bone, it's a nerve. It's an ulnar nerve that you hit since it's very superficial. You can hit it very often. That happens and <laughs> gives that electrical sensation, disgusting sensation. Okay, what else? Now, in here, I'm not going to go in detail. This is actually, uh, the, well, let me explain first what it is. The, in here, we can see that this chart is, in here, is divided into, in this section, we're going to see the muscular innervation. This is the motor action of the nerve, and this is the sensory portion of the nerve. Okay, sensory. So the name of the muscles um, are not going to be covered in here because this is part of the lab. But you can surely use these charts, a great tool to study for uh, the muscles, individual muscles on the lab. Okay, set that. Um, muscular innervation, musculocutaneous, innervates muscles here, muscles, I'm talking about motor uh, aspect, the muscles of the anterior aspect of the arm. The medium nerve, okay, is going to innervate almost all the anterior compartment, anterior muscles of the forearm, the one that flex the wrist and your fingers, uh, except one and a half. And that one and a half, which are one of these is called ulnaris, uh, is, are innervated by the ulnar nerve, okay? Those with the muscles. Now, the sensory part. In here, we can see this in the forearm. This is anterior, can you see? And this is posterior, anatomical position. So, the anterior, anterior, lateral, and a little bit of the posterior portion of your forearm is innervated, is monitored, all the uh, uh, general senses, touch, temperature, vibration, pain, it's uh, monitored by the musculocutaneous nerve. So how can you test for this nerve? Is it working properly? Well, you can grab uh, maybe a needle and uh, softly uh, stick it on the, on the skin to see if you feel pain. Oh, you felt pain in here, so musculocutaneous is working. Take a cotton ball and that's light touch. 
take something cold, something hot, and that you're testing for your ther thermal receptors um, uh, monitored by the musculocutaneous nerve. So that's, those are sensory sensations, okay, sensory parts of the nerve, and these are the motor commands. If this part doesn't work, these muscles won't contract. If this part doesn't work, the sensory portion of the nerve, we won't uh, be able to feel sensations on the surface of the skin. The thing is that these nerves are mixed. When you damage, let's say, the musculocutaneous nerve, you're damaging the motor and the sensory fibers. Okay, now cool thing in the hand. Look at the hand, distal to the wrist, okay? You're going to see, look at the, uh, the structures that are innervated in here by the median nerve. All of these are median nerve until these, the half of the fourth digit. Can you see? Just the half. The rest, well, and in here, just go until the, uh, in the posteriorly, it only goes until the distal to the proximal interphalangeal joint. I, follow, I hope you follow me with that. Now, the cool fact is that, you know that sometimes you're in class or in your whatever, in your work, in your house, watching these videos or in your lecture, and you are pressing, you know, the, the holding the, the weight of the head with your arm, forearm, and then you're pressing against, you know, the ulnar nerve against the flat surface and it gets numb, okay? Stop firing. And now I want the next time that happens to you that you say, ah, oh, my hand fell asleep, I want you to start touching your fingers like that, okay? And usually the one that gets numb is the ulnar, not the median, because the ulnar is more superficial than the median. And then you're going to be able to touch this is numb, this is numb, this is numb. Oh, I can feel this. This is not numb in the fourth finger because these uh, area, the, the lateral half of the fourth digit is innervated by the median nerve. Cool fact. Now, let's keep moving. This is the radial nerve. Radial nerve, again, same exercise. What you're going to see in here is the motor and the sensory functions of each nerve. The radial nerve, remember, is a posterior nerve, so it innervates the entire posterior compartment of the arm and forearm. So all the muscles that extend the arm at the shoulder and that extend the, arm, uh, the forearm at the elbow and the ones that extend the wrist and fingers. Uh, the axillary nerve innervates only two muscles, deltoid and teres minor. Done. The cutaneous, the sensory part of the nerve, you can see it in here. I mean, uh, I can't describe it for you, but just see this is axillary nerve at the level of your deltoid, okay? And this, uh, this is anterior, anterior lateral, and part, this part of your thumb or pollux, and almost all the posterior compartment of arm and forearm is monitored by sensory fibers of the radial nerve. Now, this is another example that we're going to be doing in class. I want you that with those facts, you are going to tell me, for example, let's choose wrist drop, okay? Uh, well, in here, they just told you it's a radial nerve injury. But why? Well, I just told you radial nerve innervates all the extensor muscles, right? Of the arm, forearm, um, hand, and, and the ones that move the hands and fingers. If you damage, but now we have different levels that we can damage the radial nerve, that's your homework. But if you damage the radial nerve proximally, for example, uh, you're not gonna be able to extend the arm or extend the forearm or extend the wrist. And you're gonna have wrist drop, but also you're not gonna be able to extend the arm and the forearm. Again, that's the analysis behind the knowledge of these uh, nerves. Now, let's go down. Remember, we skip the thoracic uh, section because they do not form nerves. Uh, I'm sorry, plexus. Uh, and then we go to the lumbar section. In the lumbar plexus, we have the ventral remi of starting at L1, L2, L3, and L4. They mix together and form 
this lumbar plexus, all of these. Please notice that this is an anterior view, okay? You can see the toes pointing at you, right? Uh, here. So this is an anterior view. This is the lumbar plexus. And from here, the two important nerves that we're going to describe is the thickest one, right here. It goes under the, uh, this is the femoral, I'm sorry, the femoral nerve. It goes under the inguinal ligament, remember? From lap, um, so deep to the uh, inguinal ligament. And from there, it just goes and it runs in the anterior, anterior medial aspect of the thigh and supplies uh, all the muscles we will see uh, of the thigh, uh, I mean, of the anterior compartment of the thigh, the joint, the femoral joint, and the skin. We will see what it supplies. The other branch is the this one, which is the obturator uh, nerve. And this one passes through, remember, the obturator foramen. So it goes through the obturator foramen to innervate the medial compartment of the thigh. Okay, so let's see what it does. The femoral nerve, it innervates all the anterior compartment, all the quadrants of muscles and the sartorius and part of the hip flexors. And the obturator nerve, all the medial compartment where the adductor muscles are located. Now, this is the sensory percutaneous innervation. As you can see, femoral nerve innervates or, or, or monitors sensations in almost all the anteromedial aspect of the thigh and leg, except this part that is monitored by the obturator nerve, the medial part. Um, I was going to tell you something. And, okay, I will tell you two things. Remind me, I have to tell you two things. Last plexus is the sacral plexus. So in here we have S1, S, I'm sorry, L4, S, no, L4, S1, S2, S3, S4. They form the plexus and the main beautiful branch that we're going to describe in here is the sciatic nerve. This is a beautiful, beautiful, I'm in love with this nerve. Look at how thick it is. All of this is the sciatic nerve. It's almost this thick, really. Beautiful, shiny, white. Well, see there is a, you can see the heels. So this is a posterior view. These runs, Okay, it passes through the sciatic notch, remember, in here, the sciatic notch of the uh, hip bone, it descends there and locates on the posterior aspect of your thigh. A little bit superior to or proximal to the knee joint or the popliteal area, it branches in two, okay? The lateral branch is the common fibular branch and the medial one is the tibial branch, okay? Um, this in here, uh, the sciatic nerve with its branches is going to innervate all the muscles of the posterior compartment of the thigh and leg. Uh, that we will go in detail on the lab. And the cutaneous innervation, you can see it in here. In green is the tibialis, uh, I'm sorry, the common fibular nerve. And in orange is the tibial nerve. The important things that I wanted to tell you, is this the last? Yes. About, no, don't worry, there's one more, one more video. But important things about spinal nerves, actually about nerve plexuses, is that with this network, the body gets, makes sure that one spinal nerve innervates several muscles and that a single muscle is innervated by several spinal nerves. So if something happens, one spinal nerve gets injured, we have like a backup. We have other nerves supplying that muscle. So, okay, so in order to completely paralyze a muscle, you have to block or you have to get injured all the spinal nerves supplying that muscle. That was one. And the other thing that I wanted to tell you is that all of these nerves that we have been describing they innervate, as we can see, muscles, they innervate the skin, but also the joints that they're, uh, that they're nearby, okay? Um, so see you in the next and last video of this section where we're going to describe the skin innervation and the dermatomes. And that's it. See you later, alligators.